she's amazing, isn't she? Ah, her technique is amazing. Kia ora and welcome back. My name's Zoe Stibi, your vocal coach for today. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Leah Salonga singing on my own at the 10th anniversary of Les Miserables. I'm obsessed with her. Let's get to the video. Before I get to the utter amazingness that is Leah Salonga, I just want to say a massive thank you so much for being here today, everyone. It means the world to me to have your support. And if you want to learn how to sing like your favorite artists in the comfort of your own home, then hit that subscribe button. I'd love to see you around here some more. Let's get to Leah Salonga. Okay, I just have to stop it there because ah, I love the song. <laughs> Someone commented on one of my videos, if I like musical theater. I actually have my master's in musical theater. That's this thing over here on the wall, um, which I got from the Royal Academy of Music in Scotland. When I was 13, I actually auditioned for Les Miserables um, at my school and my parents bought me this performance so that I could practice. And I put on the subtitles on my DVD player and I used to sing along to Leah Salonga to learn the part. She, I'm like, ah, her technique is amazing. You notice there when she went down to those low notes, she went, and I can make believe he's here. And she protruded the lips a little bit. Now that's a way that you can kind of darken the sound. So if you think about the longer the tube or the longer the kind of space between the vocal folds and the end of your lips, the darker the sound is going to be. So that's a way in which that you can help get those lower resonances coming through for those low notes. Don't try and do that. And I can make believe he's here and try and hit it in like a full voice sound. You notice as well, Leah Salonga used a little bit of breath in that sound, and I can make believe he's here. And that way you're going to get that much darker sound. You're going to find it a lot easier to go lower in the range with just that little touch of breath as if you're sighing. Oh, let's keep enjoying it. Okay, 
I love this song. Isn't that terrible though? Well, now that I'm looking at it, you can see the microphone is so much further above her head. Like that is not fair. One thing that really strikes me just as I'm listening to it now, you know, is it, um, in the rain and she's adding on the vibrato almost at every single long held note. So the pavement shines like silver. That's a really personal thing, whether you like to add vibrato that much, I would suppose I would call that in today's musical theater world, that would be like a lot of vibrato being used. But that was also very stylish at the time as well. It was sort of more of a classical sound on this sort of musical theater. And also, you know, Les Miserables is almost like a musical theater opera in a way. You could say that. In today's musical theater world, we would tend to say don't add so much vibrato. So as soon as we start coloring the sound with vibrato in the rain, you start to listen to the voice more than you listen to the words or listen to the story. Okay, let's keep listening. Forever and forever. And I know it's only in my mind that I'm talking to myself and not to him. And although I know that he lies, still I say there's a way for us. I love him, but when the night is She's amazing, isn't she? Oh, Leah Salonga. This song has been sung by so many people so beautifully. It's really, really difficult to choose which one to have a look at. One of the main problems that people have with this song, um, and I'm talking main problems, like 99% of people that sing this song, is when they're going for those large intervals. Um, and I know it's only in my mind that I'm talking to myself. When they're going for those high notes with the glottal onset, so where you've got that, I'm talking, where the vocal folds are closed before the onset of the tone, that's a glottal onset. Um, they have a tendency to go, and I'm talking, and swoop up to the note. Now, I am well aware that that is an effect that we can use and it is allowed to be used. But as a technical exercise and for beginner musical theater singers out there who aren't quite famous, um, I would suggest thinking the note stopping before you sing it. So go, and I'm talking so that you've got the I'm on the note and you're not going, I'm talking. And that's a way actually just in general that you can practice your intervals, making sure you stop think the note, close the vocal folds, prepare the note, and then go to sing it. And you're going to find that the, and I'm talking to myself, will be like easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's get listening. So good. I think that is the first time I've ever really noticed that big change in her voice between the lower part of her range and those higher notes. When she went the, 
Trees are barren everywhere. The streets are full of strangers. I love him. Ah, when she with the. But every day I'm learning. All my life I've fully been. And you kind of notice, obviously, it wasn't that massive. And she made a change because I would almost hesitate to say that she was not really belting those top notes. Okay. I can't be a hundred percent certain to me. It sounded like a lot of vibrato in the sound. So in Esther voice training, we wouldn't call that pure belt, but you can use vibrato at the end of the belt, but it kind of like boosts the sound even more and makes it even more exciting. Because as I said, when you add vibrato, we listen to the voice and not the storytelling. But that was quite interesting. I've never heard this song on such good earphones. I think I always used to just have it coming through my TV. And um, that's very, very cool to hear that change that's going on in her sound. If I'm a bit confusing with like, oh, what is vibrato? What a thick vocal folds. What are you talking about, Zoe? Um, I'm actually running an Estor voice training introduction course, and you can check out the link in the description below. We're going to go through vocal fold onsets. We're going to go through thick vocal folds, thin vocal folds, falsetto, so chest voice, head voice, and falsetto, and how you can maneuver around all of those as well. Lots of things. There's also going to be a masterclass at the end for those who wish to sing, but spaces are limited just to make sure that we've got a chance to all practice what I'm going on about. Um, so sign up down below. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure to revisit one of my favorite singers, Leah Salonga, on my own. <sighs> it, let me know what else you want me to have a look at down in the comments below. I'd love to hear. The list is getting long, but I do my best to reply to everyone and to add absolutely every request to the list. Um, and I'm just working my way through it. So I'm doing my best. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button. It, it honestly really helps my channel to, to grow, to get more people um, learning more about singing and I just want to I I just want to help everyone with their singing. I really want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to sing because I think everyone has a beautiful voice and that's why I love Esther voice training because that is basically the premises for everything. Everyone has a beautiful voice and everyone can sing. You just have to learn how to use your instruments. So, have an awesome rest of your day everyone. Kakiteano.